I'm going to go right into it. No introduction. <laughs> We're from the Song and Spirit Institute for Peace. I'm Hazan Steve Klaper. I'm a Jewish cantor. This is Brother Al Masha, a Franciscan friar. Often I say, you know, that what's a Jewish cantor and a Franciscan friar doing here together, and you'll figure out which one's which, but it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Song and Spirit uh, is uh, an interfaith nonprofit. We bring people of different faith traditions together in creative service through education, worship, music, art. But originally, Song and Spirit was just the name of the band. So I'm dressed like this because I belong to a religious order called the Franciscans, which was founded in the 1200s, so 13th century. And it was founded by a little Italian man by the name of Francis, and he's become Saint Francis of Assisi, a very important saint for those of us who are Catholics and even for some of us who are not. But uh, something that we really remember him by is how he would greet people. No matter who you were, whether you were a prince or a pauper, he would greet you the same way. In Latin, it, the words are pax et bonum. In Italian, the words are pace bene, peace and all good. Pace bene, peace and all good. Pace bene, peace and all good. Where the world is hurting, peace and all good. Where the world is broken, peace and all good. Pace bene, peace and all good. Pace bene, peace and all good. Upon all of God's people, peace and all good. Upon the world. singing all day long yesterday. <laughs> it was Yom Kippur. The Shana Tova, Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I was singing with Reb Ora Ahuvia. Mm. I should make her come up here and sing too. <laughs> let, her, let her rest. Let her rest. I mean, she's only a rabbi. <laughs> in the Torah, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, Ein od milvado. There's nothing except God. In the Holy Quran, it says, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but God. There's no reality except God. And the English, I think you'll get. Ah, 
The International Day of Peace is observed around the world each year on the 21st day of September. Established in 1981 by unanimous United Nations resolution, Peace Day is designated as a period of nonviolence and ceasefire and provides a globally shared date for all humanity to commit to peace above all differences and to contribute to building a culture of peace. In establishing the International Day of Peace, the United Nations General Assembly decided that it would be appropriate to devote a specific time to concentrate the efforts of the United Nations and its member states, as well as of the whole of mankind, to promoting the ideals of peace and to giving positive evidence of their commitment to peace in all viable ways. The International Day of Peace should be devoted to commemorating and strengthening the ideals of peace, both within and among all nations and peoples. This year's theme uh, celebrates the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the right to peace, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights at 70. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres states, it is time all nations and all people live up to the words of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which recognizes the inherent dignity and equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human race. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a milestone document in the history of human rights, drafted by representatives with different legal and cultural backgrounds from all regions of the world the Declaration was adopted by the UN General Assembly in Paris in December of 1948 as a common standard of achievement for all peoples and all nations. The Universal Declaration, the most translated document in the world available in more than 500 language, languages, is as relevant today as it was on the day that it was adopted. Through the years, many diverse, diverse activities have been organized in observance of the International Day of Peace. These include educational events and activities, workshops, marches, musical celebrations, meditations, intercultural dialogues and interfaith gatherings, environmental projects, art exhibits, common community gatherings, and much more. Peace Day programs are taking place right now in the city of Detroit and tomorrow in Grand Rapids and Holland, and an 11 a.m. rally will be held tomorrow at the state capitol in Lansing. If you have interest in additional year-round opportunities for engaging in peace efforts, please see me or any of tonight's speakers or sponsors after the program. So thank you for joining the Know Your Neighbor Daily Initiative and its supporting organizations on the eve of International Day of Peace right here in Troy, Michigan. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Barone. Um, I am the daughter of Luella Barone, who um, had the Troy Peace Park here dedicated in her memory in 1999. I'm happy to be here, and I just wanted to read right from the um, dedication, sort of the purpose of the Peace Garden when it was established. Um, it, will, it will be a place where families in Troy can come to reflect upon and celebrate peace as a concept for life. The Peace Garden is dedicated in the memory of Luella Barone, a distinguished citizen of Troy who promoted understanding and harmony by giving voices to the many cultures of our city, the city that she loved. Troy residents, organizations, and businesses are now able to experience the tranquility of the Peace Garden and contribute to its beauty for future generations. So it's always nice when I come home to Troy, I don't live here anymore, but it's nice to come home and see everyone together and to see that sculpture still there because it was very important to her. Um, her legacy is that she um, came to Troy um, with, she's a, a daughter of immigrants from Italy, came to Troy um, with her immigrant husband, <laughs> uh, my father, and um, established two uh, philanthropic organizations here, one to celebrate the cu culture and the Italian culture and the Italian community, the Italian Study Group of Troy, and also a special performing arts club for developmentally disabled, physically and developmentally disabled uh, young adults. She was a concert pianist, loved to play the piano and have everyone come together um, and, and sing. They used to tour um, the market. I used to do Italian folk dance um, and we used to you know, dance at Hart Plaza and 
do quite a bit. So it's a little bit about my mom and her legacy is that she loved to bring people together of different cultures, different religions. I felt like her family and her friends were United Nations of, of um, all, all um, shades and religions, and it was a beautiful thing. And she loved this city so much. Um, my friend Lisa's here and just reminded me she would have done anything for Troy. She would have fixed the potholes if needed. Um, she was really passionate about this city, and it's an honor to have the park dedicated to her and have it still be here. So happy to be here to celebrate the city of Troy, the great diversity that exists here, and um, you know, it's all about being stronger together. Um, we are stronger together, and um, there's always something we can learn from each other and each other's culture. Um, so thank you for having me, and um, it's a pleasure to be part of this today. No, I'm not the mayor of Troy. <laughs> Unfortunately, he could not be here tonight, so he asked me if I would read the proclamation for International Day of Peace. Whereas the issue of peace embraces the deepest hopes of all peoples and remains humanity's guiding inspiration. And whereas in 1981, the United Nations proclaimed the International Day of Peace be devoted to commemorating and strengthening the ideals of peace both within and among all nations and peoples. Whereas the United Nations expanded the observance of the International Day of Peace in 2001 to include the call for a day of global ceasefire nonviolence and invited all nations and people to honor a cessation of hostilities for the duration of the day. And whereas there is a growing support within our city for the observance of the International Day of Peace, which affirms a vision of our world at peace and fosters cooperation between individuals, organizations, and nations. And whereas, global crises impel all citizens to work toward converting humanity's noblest aspirations for world peace into a practical reality for future generations. And whereas, the 2018 Peace Day theme celebrates the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the right to peace. Everyone is encouraged to learn more at www.internationaldayofpeace.org. Now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Troy does hereby proclaim September 21st, 2018 as International Day of Peace in the City of Troy and urges all citizens to join us in recognizing this day to discover different faith traditions teachings on peace or any other education and public awareness activities in order to help establish a global day of peace in our homes, our communities, and between nations. And be it further resolved that the City Council urges all government agencies, organizations, schools, places of worship, and individuals in our city to commemorate the International Day of Peace, including joining the Troy Interfaith Group at their monthly meetings and events. There are special programs year-round for people to engage in dialogue about peace, faith, and justice among the religions locally and globally, and presented the 20th day of September, 2018. Good evening, I'm Chief Gary Mayor of the Troy Police Department. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, and I thank you for inviting me here tonight, Brenda. Uh, I must note that this is much more comfortable than it was last year. Those of you may remember how incredibly hot it was outside, so it's a much more comfortable environment we have here tonight. It's a pleasure to be here as we recognize the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. As your police department, we keep the peace every day. We protect the rights of our citizens every single day that we work. It is a pleasure for us to do it. It is a calling for all of us. I'm a student of history. I had the opportunity when I was attending the FBI National Academy to go with probably 50 other law enforcement professionals to the National Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. And it really struck me as we walked through that, that museum, uh, the tragedy of everything that had occurred, and the guide that was walking all of us through. It was a special event night. They had closed it down just for the law enforcement to go through. And the guide pointed out to us that they liked the groups from the FBI National Academy to come through there because they wanted to emphasize that it was their belief that if the police in Germany had done their job very early on, 
when this movement started that it might have prevented the war. It might have prevented that movement from taking off the way it did. And it always struck me when you think of the power of policing and what we do in the communities we work with and the mission and the calling that we have. And we take that very seriously as our job. It's what we do. All of us in public safety know that what we do is a calling. We know that we head towards danger as others flee. Police work is reflected in Psalm 82, verses 3 through 4. Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy, and deliver them from the hand of the wicked. That's what we do in law enforcement. Partnership with our community is very important to us. We can't do it alone. We have to have groups like this, groups like ALPAC, the Troy Interfaith Group, the Troy Alliance Against Hate Crimes, the Troy Community Coalition. Many of you are recognized from those groups. We see each other regularly at these. We have to have the outreach and as a community get together and work together to bring peace. <coughs> these groups all want to make the world a better place in closing, I would ask that during your prayers that you pray for our police chaplains that assist our law enforcement officers as we go about our job. They have a difficult job. They do it on a volunteer basis, and we appreciate all they do. As you know, uh, Pastor Cornwall is one of our chaplains. I appreciate his work. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Erin Kaiser. I'm the Early Childhood Director in Troy School District. I um, wanted to thank you for extending the invitation. I'm always honored to represent Troy in these kind of situations, and it's a really meaningful event. Um, they asked me to speak about peace in our schools, and it sounds pretty beautiful, right? Think about doves and rainbows, but unfortunately, that's not really the way that it's been covered, and that's not really what gets a lot of hype in the media. But peace in our schools and safety for everyone in our schools is imperative. So the question is, how do we get there? Um, I was looking up quotes and different things that spoke to me, and Mahatma Gandhi said, if we're going to teach real peace in this world, if we're going to carry on a real war against war, we shall have to begin with the children. So in Troy, we're going to do that as a system. We're gonna do it by empowering our students and attending to their well-being. Through service opportunities and connections to the community, activities that provide a sense of belonging for every child. I only have a couple of minutes, so I can only list a handful of the amazing things that the kids in Troy are doing. Um, a lot of it looks like service, a lot of it looks like connections to the community and connections to nature and connections to other children, um, because that's really the reflection of peace in Troy. Um, at Leonard, they raised $6,000 in bucks for books. Hamilton raised $2,000 for leukemia patients. Bemis has a greenhouse to have students connected to nature. and learn about sustainability. Waddle, Waddle students collected 60 pounds of personal items for Salvation Army. Troy High has volunteers uh, that go to Brookdale, Brookdale Senior Living. Troy High and Athens Student Council have a senior citizens ball. Troy Center for Transition collected thousands of sleeping mats and food bags for homeless. <coughs> IA East uh, participates in Little Dresses for Africa that boost young girls' confidence, educate them, and um, teach them family skills. There's a district-wide um, MLK Day of Service. There's staff and students clearing stage nature center of invasive species. Troy Youth Assistance has youth involvement parties where there's peer mentorships happening. <coughs> Cultural fairs and assemblies, character education programs at the elementary and middle school levels, clubs, athletics, fine arts programs. Everything is an opportunity for children to share their gifts and connect to one another and find a sense of belonging. High schools showed the movie Angst and had a speaker in for the U of M De uh, Depression Center. Social justice initiatives, peer mediation programs, restorative practices, initiatives to educate our community about social emotional needs. One Troy is embracing diversity at every level in every way. As the early childhood director, I engage with our youngest learners every single day. It's so important for our children to feel themselves a part of their classroom and see themselves reflected in their classrooms that it's a requirement of our programs, that they see themselves inside that community. It sets the stage for three and four year olds to embrace the diversity of others from the youngest age, promotes a balanced importance of being friends and partners along with readers and writers. Our programs immerse students in diversity on day one. Our classrooms resemble a mix of ages, genders, cultural backgrounds, social economic, socioeconomic levels, developmental abilities, and interests. Among all these things, 
What's the biggest indicator of how our students will gravitate? It's interest. If you see four kids playing in the black area, it's not because they have the same skin color, it's not because they have the same size house at home or because their IEP services are the same. It's because they're the expert block builders. So we've empowered them to make choices for themselves that extend way beyond what their subgroups are on paper. Troy is beginning with our youngest learners to say, the relationships you form today are based on what's in your head and what's in your heart. Nothing is more important to us than the way we treat one another in school. Nelson Mandela, I'm going to end with this one, said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, then they can learn to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than the opposite. So teach your children to love. Model acceptance, demonstrate kindness, and insist upon peace on World Peace Day and every day. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zara Ahmed, and I'm representing Troy High School's Social Justice Project. I joined on accident, actually, attending a club meeting after school one day. However, it was no accident that I fell in love with the purpose of our project, diversity and inclusion. Troy High and Athens High School students meet after school every week to rehearse skits, skits depicting situations of social issues, such as racism or bullying. We then perform them for all Troy School District 8th graders, and the experience draws more response from the 8th grade audiences every year than I ever thought it could. At the end of our skit presentation, we open up a panel to facilitate discussion with the kids about the issues, what they saw, how, to, how they reacted, and it's really warming to see their faces light up, you know, when they see that a group that they may belong to or they may identify with is being represented on stage. Some kids are so touched, even moved to tears, that the schools that they will be going to in the future have an established community of acceptance and understanding. I've seen that all it takes is a smile or kind words to make someone's day or be the acknowledgement or validation that they need that day. Promoting peace starts at understanding our differences and creating an atmosphere for tolerance. And all it takes is a smile. Thank you. So we've been doing this or something like this for a while now, for several years. And uh, my relationship with Brother Al, teaching together, singing together, doing social justice, working for social justice together, has made me a better Jew, made me a better teacher of Torah. And likewise, I'm a better Catholic Christian. So, so it, it, we go to Jewish, uh, groups and and you know we we get to have Brother Al tell them old Hasidic stories or you know quote something from from Pirkei Avot. Um, at some point, I I saw or read the, uh, a prayer called the Prayer of Saint Francis, "Make me an instrument of your peace," which is well known. It wasn't really written by Saint Francis, but everybody thinks it was, and it really does reflect Franciscan. I wasn't. I, so I said to Brother Al, "This would make a great song." He said, "Well, you know there are." songs in church. I said, well, I'm not troubled by knowing them. I get, I mean, I'm, I'm not burdened by knowing any of these church tunes. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm the age I am and I just discovered this. So this might be the uh, one version of... It, to my knowledge, it's the only musical setting for the Peace Prayer of St. Francis written by a Jewish singer-songwriter. <laughs> Make me an instrument 
have your peace. Whoa, oh, oh, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. by Sarah Adler, who works as a chaplain and has for several years at this point for the University of Michigan Hospitals. Um, over the past few years, with all of these incidents in the news of um, gun violence in schools and at other places that we'd rather not see people who shouldn't have guns walk in with guns, even today there's a story in the news. Um, Sarah was inspired to write the following prayer. God of our mothers and fathers, God of tenderness, God of lovers, teachers, and children, may we see the day when love conquers fear, when compassion overrides judgment, and the echo of gunshot is heard no more. Let a great peace wrap its arm around our country and hold us tight. Unite us, people of all races, religions, orientations and identities in a bond of true fellowship. Teach us to respect difference and take pride in each other. Let us learn that diversity makes us stronger, that the healthiest forests are filled with a multitude of species and birdsong. God on high, let us find consolation and comfort under your canopy of peace. May the memories of those assaulted by violence inspire us to mend our broken world. May we learn war no more. Come, let us write a new covenant of kindness to end the flood of tears. Seal this promise in the sky, a rainbow to part the clouds. So this is the Baha'i Prayer for Peace. Be generous in prosperity 
and thankful in adversity. Be fair in thy judgment and guarded in thy speech. Be a lamp unto those who walk in darkness and a home to the stranger. Be eyes to the blind and a guiding light unto the feet of the erring. Be a breath of life to the body of mankind, a dew to the soul of the human heart, and a fruit upon the tree of humility. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon all of you. I am Arich Tahir from the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, and this is the Muslim prayer for peace. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Praise be to the Lord of the universe, who has created us and made us into tribes and nations, that we may know each other, not that we may despise each other. If the enemy inclines towards peace, do thou also incline towards peace and trust in God, for the Lord is the one that heareth and knoweth of all things. And the servants of God most gracious are those who walk on the earth in humility, and when we address them, we say peace. Namaskar, good evening. My name is Mahavir Khetavat and I am representing Bhartiya Temple to say some peace prayers from our Hindu religion, what we also call the Sanatan Dharma. So the first prayer is going to be a little short and they are very wonderful prayers. So first I will say in the Sanskrit, then I will definitely translate in English. So first prayer goes like this. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirga Maya Hai Mrityorma Amritanga Maya Hai Om Shanti 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 The translation in English goes like this O Almighty Lord, kindly lead us from unreal to real, from darkness to light and from death to immortality. Om Peace peace and peace be unto all. Now why we say peace three times that I will try to explain in a few seconds uh, after the next pair. Next pair is a little longer so <clears throat> it goes like this Om Dho Shanti Antariksha Shanti Prithvi Shanti Rapa Shanti Roshadhaya Shanti Vanaspataya Shanti Vishvideva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarva Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Sama Shanti Redi Om Shanti 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 So the translation of this prayer in English goes like this. This both all both of these are like a Vedic prayer which are like very very old, timeless, we don't know when they were kind of composed or written. So the, this prayer translation goes like this, O Lord Almighty, may there be peace in the celestial regions, may there be peace on earth, may the waters be epiging, may the herbs be wholesome, may trees and plants bring peace to all, may all beneficent beings bring peace to us. May the Vedic law propagate peace all through the world. May all these things be a source of peace to us. May the peace itself bestow peace on all and may we all realizing that peace within ourselves. Now, both these prayers you might have seen that we say peace, the word peace is repeated three times. Why we do that? All the Vedic prayer or the Vedic prayers are like that. We say Om Shanti 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 means peace, peace and peace be unto all. What this means is that this peace should relieve us from the three types of afflictions that we are generally affected by. 
and what those afflictions are we call in sanskrit as adhi uh, adhyatmik adhi bhautik and adhi devik adhyatmik is the afflictions created by ourselves and let me tell you 99% of the afflictions are all created by our own self you will if you analyze you will find it and the adhi bhautik means they are created by others adhi devik means by the nature for example the flood or the fire or the tsunami and things like that so that's why that that's the reason we say lord give us peace that should relieve us from these three times of afflictions so thank you very much greetings to you all i am uh, here from jain temple in farmington and i am going to recite the prayer peace and universal love is the essence of the gospel preached by all the enlightened ones the lord has preached that equanimity is the dharma forgive do i creatures all and let all creatures forgive me unto all have i amity and unto none enmity know that violence is the root cause of all miseries in the world violence in fact is the knot of bondage do not injure any living being this is the eternal perennial and unalterable way of spiritual life any weapon howsoever powerful it may be can always be superseded by a superior one but no weapon can however be superior to non violence and love thank you I'm Julie Coring from Big Beaver United Methodist Church. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be known as the children of God. But I say to you that here, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To those who strike you on the cheek, offer the other also and from those who take away your cloak do not withhold your coat as well give to everyone who begs from you and to those who take away your goods do not ask them again and as you wish that others would do to you do so to them thank you It is given to me the responsibility to bring our evening to a close before we sing uh, the final song. Uh, I've been part of the Troy community for just a little over 10 years. I've been in leadership of the Troy Area Interfaith Group uh, for a good portion of that in one form or another. Uh, now I also serve as a police chaplain. Uh, and. Uh, one thing I've noticed as I've been part of this community is our diversity and the importance of that. And one of the things that I know to be true is that if we are to experience <coughs> peace, it will be relational. And that means stepping across the boundaries and barriers that we so often place between ourselves. And often those boundaries and barriers are religious in orientation, but they can be ethnic or national. Um, we find all kinds of ways to build walls between ourselves. And the only way we can truly move towards peace is if we work together to tear down the walls that we have erected. And so I am thankful that we have gathered here tonight for this purpose. 
called together by the United Nations um, and by our community, but it, we're a small group. And so we need to do some, uh, in the Christian tradition, we would call some, uh, we need to be evangelists, that is, share the good news of peace by inviting others to join us in the journey. And so I, um, as we go forth this evening, uh, having sung Let There Be Peace on Earth, uh, let us go forth as people who are committed to sharing the good news, that there is a purpose for peace, and that we will be peacemakers. As, uh, as Jesus, as we were just reminded in the last reading, and I will share that in my own prayer uh, as, we, as we close this evening. So let us commit ourselves to being peacemakers, uh, and let us go forth with that on our hearts and tell that news to all our neighbors, so that we might make Troy truly a place of peace. In your own way and in your own sense, would you join me in prayer for our community and for beyond? We have gathered as a community to celebrate the International Day of Peace, and we know that peace is elusive. Wars and conflicts are many, some among us might even be refugees from some of these conflicts. And so peace, in that sense, seems even more elusive. And while peace seems far away, the call to peace remains strong within us. And it is rooted in our faith traditions. So even when we fail to live in peace, the witness to peace remains with us. Jesus proclaimed, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. So may we hear this call to become peacemakers in this, our community, by pursuing justice in our world and by recognizing that our common humanity transcends ethnicity, nationhood, or religion. Peacemaking is relational, which requires us to reach beyond our normal circles and embrace one another as children of God. As Henri Nouwen reminds us, true peacemakers are grateful persons, persons who constantly recognize and celebrate the peace of God within them and among them. And therefore, as we go forth from this place this evening, as a community that is diverse in ethnicity, religion, politics, education, sexual orientation, gender, hearing from the Torah, may the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. And now would you join, stand and join in singing, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
with each other.